Hello friends, I welcome you in lecture number 9 on sampling distributions. In lecture number 8, we have discussed what is sampling distribution of the ratio of sample variances. So let's recall, suppose we have two populations, population 1 and population 2. And suppose population variances for both the populations are denoted by sigma 1 square and sigma 2 square. Suppose we are drawing samples of size n1 and size n2 from both the populations and then we are considering this random variable s1 square over sigma1 square and s2 square over sigma2 square then if two conditions are satisfied then this follows an f distribution with numerator degrees of freedom equal to n1 minus 1 and denominator degrees of freedom equal to n2 minus 1. So what are those two conditions? The conditions are that both the populations are normal and both the populations are independent of each other. And if both the populations are independent, these random samples are also independent. So under these two conditions, we can say that this random variable follows an f distribution. Now suppose these two variances are equal that is sigma 1 square equal to sigma 2 square then it, in that case we will have s1 square over s2 square that follows an f distribution. So with this in mind we can answer this question which was asked in GTU summer 2020 exam. If two independent random samples of size n1 equal to 7 and n2 equal to 13 are taken from a normal population. What is the probability that the variance of the first sample will be at least three times as large as that of second sample? So here both the samples are taken from the single population which follows a normal distribution. So therefore we can say that we have population 1 and population 2 are equal because they are taking both these samples from single population. So we can say that here we have sigma 1 square equal to sigma 2 square. We can consider population 1 and population 2 as the same population and they are considering random samples of size n1 equal to 7 and n2 equal to 13 from this normal population and it is given that both the samples are independent and population is also normal therefore we can say that both the conditions are satisfied. So because we have this situation we can say that capital F is equal to s1 square over s2 square. This is our random variable which follows an f distribution with n1 minus 1 equal to 7 minus 1 that is 6 degrees of freedom in the numerator and n2 minus 1 that is 13 minus 1 equal to 12 degrees of freedom in the denominator. This we denote by nu1 and this we denoted by nu2 nu1 means numerator degrees of freedom nu2 is the notation for denominator degrees of freedom and this random variable follows f distribution because we have normal population and both the samples are independent now we know that if we have f distribution then its graph will be looking like this it is having skewness towards the right side and this will go parallel to x-axis and we have discussed about f distribution in earlier lectures so if you are not familiar with f distribution you can watch my lectures on f distribution first and then go for this lecture now what is meaning of this point so suppose we denote this point by f suffix alpha then we can say that area to the right of this point 
is alpha in terms of probability we can say that probability that this uh, distribution f let me write f here probability that this random variable f takes value greater than this point f alpha this is equal to alpha uh, we must be clear about this thing whenever we have f distribution then we can say that if we denote this point by f alpha then what is meaning of this the point f alpha is the value of random variable f such that probability that f is greater than f alpha is equal to alpha now here which probability we have to find out we are asked to find the probability that variance of the first sample that is s1 square will be at least three times large as that of second sample three times large as that of second sample means three times s2 square and we have at least that means we have greater than or equal to sign we have to decide the probability that variance of the first sample which we denote by capital s1 square will be at least three times as large as that of the second sample so we are asked to find out this probability probability that s1 square is greater than or equal to three times s2 square so i am writing here i have to find out this probability now this i can rewrite as because we know that s1 square and s2 square are always non negative and we assume that suppose s2 square is non zero then this we can write in this way these two are equivalent provided that we assume that s2 square cannot take zero value now uh, we know that now s1 square over s2 square is nothing but capital f so we have probability that capital f is greater than or equal to 3 so we have to find out this value f is greater than or equal to f suffix alpha so we have to find out critical value f alpha equal to 3 for nu1 equal to what is numerator degrees of freedom nu1 equal to 6 and nu2 equal to 12 here numerator degrees of freedom are 6 these are 12 and uh, we are interested in the probability that f is greater than or equal to 3 so we can again draw table here graph here and we are interested here we are interested in the value of alpha what is the value of alpha such that f alpha equal to 3 so here uh, we will find out this we have to search for this f alpha in the f distribution table and once we find out that for which alpha f alpha equal to 3 with this degrees of freedom then if we can find out alpha then we know that this is equal to alpha always probability that f is greater than or equal to f alpha equal to alpha so we have to search in the table that for which critical value f alpha equal to 3 so for which level of significance or for which value of alpha f alpha is 3 together with this degrees of freedom that we have to search in the table so now i am searching in the table here again i repeat i am interested in this probability probability that f is greater than or equal to 3 and we know that probability that f is greater than f alpha is equal to alpha so i have to search for this critical value f alpha because i know that probability that f is greater than f alpha is al always alpha so i have to search in the table that for which value of alpha 
f alpha equal to 3. So, in the table, I have to search for this value 3 and for degrees of freedom equal to 6 and 12. Now, we know that we have different level of significance 5 percent, 1 percent, 0.1 percent, etc. So, we start with 5 percent level of significance and we check whether we obtain 3 for this 6 and 12 degrees of freedom. So, first I search for numerator degrees of freedom equal to 6 and here I search for denominator degrees of freedom equal to 12 and if I take intersecting point you can see I have obtained 3 here. So, what is meaning of this alpha is 5 percent. So, if we can say that f suffix 0 0.05 with 6 degrees of freedom and 12 degrees of freedom equal to 3. So, this is equivalent to this fact probability that f is greater than or equal to 3 that I can write as probability that f is greater than or equal to 0 0.05 and using this we can say that probability is nothing but 0 0.05. And, uh, uh, why I have seen for 5 percent level of significance directly? So, that is there is no reason for that because this table starts from alpha equal to 5 percent. I have seen in 5 percent. If you wish, you can see for uh, 1 percent level of significance also. So, here suppose I want to check whether for this. So, numerator degrees of freedom are 6, denominator degrees of freedom are 12, and uh, here. Uh, I can see this is 4.82, but we are not interested in 4.82. Uh, we want to find out probability, we want to find out that value of alpha such that we have f is greater than f alpha, that is f alpha must be equal to 3. So, we are interested in that critical value such that f alpha equal to 3. And if we take alpha equal to 1 percent that is 0 0.01 then f alpha is not equal to 3 4.82. And if you wish you can uh, search by taking control f you can search for 3.00 here as I am doing here you can see I am searching here I am writing 3.00 and uh, you can see here I obtain one critical value as 3 in this line. You can see this. Here I find out 3, but here degrees of freedom are 29 and here 10. So, we have to take care of degrees of freedom also. Suppose we go for this table. This is for 1 percent. Here also we obtain 3 here. You can see here. Here I obtain 3 but this is corresponding to 19 degrees of freedom and here 20 degrees of freedom and here I am going for this table and here you can see this 3 corresponds to 1000 degrees of freedom. So, that is also not of our interest. So, the only possibility is this one for numerator degrees of freedom equal to 6 and denominator degrees of freedom equal to 12. So, what we have seen we find that f 0 0.05 with nu 1 equal to 6, nu 2 equal to 12 is 3. This means probability that f is greater than f 0 0.05 is 3 and 0 0.05 is nothing but uh, this is 0 0.05 probability that f is greater than f suffix 0 0.05 is 0 0.05. And this value is nothing but 3. So, we are interested in probability that f is greater than or equal to 3 and 3 corresponds to f suffix 0 0.05 and using this result we find that probability is 0 0.05. So, this is very nice question. So, here now I can write that this is equal to probability that f is greater than or equal to f suffix 0 0.05 because f suffix 0 0.05 with 6 and 12 degrees of freedom is equal to 3.
and using this result alpha is 0 0.05 therefore required probability is 0 0.05 so let's again write all these things systematically so all you have to understand for this is you must be clear about this that if we have f alpha critical value then probability that f is greater than f alpha is equal to alpha now what is required probability in our question so required probability let me write here required probability is that probability that variance of the first sample will be at least three times large as that of the second sample so i am interested in this probability this i can rewrite as probability that s1 square over s2 square is greater than or equal to 3 here we assume that this s2 square is positive so that we can divide it by s1 square now this s1 square over s2 square is now f random variable so we are interested in the probability that capital f takes the values greater than or equal to 3 now in the table we find that value of f at 5 percent of level of significance with nu1 equal to 6 and nu2 equal to 12 degrees of freedom this is nothing but uh, this value is 3 so here instead of 3 i can write that f is greater than or equal to this critical value f suffix 0 0.05 this we obtain using f table so from f table we find that critical value corresponding to 6 degrees of freedom in the numerator and 12 degrees of freedom in the denominator for alpha equal to 5 percent level is 3 so now we know that if we have probability that f is greater than f alpha then this is equal to alpha so here alpha is 0 0.05 therefore this probability is 0 0.05 so this is nice question it is related to the sampling distribution of the ratio of sample variances so to answer this question you must be familiar about this that whenever we are drawing two random samples from two normal populations which are independent and if sigma 1 square and sigma 2 square are equal then this ratio follows an f distribution with n1 minus 1 degrees of freedom in the numerator and n2 minus 1 degrees of freedom in the denominator and you must be familiar with this also probability that f is greater than f alpha is equal to alpha and you must be familiar with the use of f tables also i have made separate lecture on the use of f tables also so if you are not familiar you can watch that lecture also okay fine this is all about this session i hope you like it thanks for